All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to do uh, trach care on this patient here. Um, so trach or tracheostomy care. One of the first things you need to know is what kind of trach they have. This mannequin has a trach that um, is a reusable one. So um, there's other ones that are disposable. Either way, you wanna make sure that you know the size because the size of the trach is gonna determine the size that you have prepared. Um, regardless, if it, regardless if it's disposable or not, you wanna have a couple at the bedside. Should the patient pull out their trach, that could become a medical emergency. So for example, this one right here is a number 10. Here's some measurements. You don't need to know all those measurements. Um, as long as maybe the patient will tell you they have a number 10 or you can look at some of the medical records. You wanna have the size that the patient has and then one size smaller at the bedside. Um, you need the size smaller because should the patient actually have um, maybe swelling in the airway and it gets pulled out, you might only be able to put a smaller one in. Then if you look off on the side, this one right here, it's got that balloon at the bottom. It kind of looks like a little disc. That, if it's inflated, will become a tr cuffed tracheostomy. A cuffed tracheostomy will put pressure on the sides um, and allow that patient's vocal cords to vibrate so they'll be able to talk with this. If it is not cuffed, they likely will not be able to talk because there is no vibration. So this one right here is a disposable one. If you are using a disposable one, as you take the um, old trach out and you put the new one in, there's a lot less cleaning to be used, but I am gonna go ahead and show you guys how to do the cleaning of the non-disposable tracheostomy because some of our patients, especially some that have had their trach for a long time will have non-disposable. I'm gonna go ahead and set these off to the side. So I've got my trach care kit. I also have this trach tube holder. Um, this holder here I prefer because there's Velcro versus the ones that tie. The ones that tie tend to get a little harder to take apart. So I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Make sure your area is nice and clean. And this is sterile because if you think about where that trach tubing is, it's right here, it's going straight to that airway. So when you do this, this is called an oxygen mask. Um, it's specific for tracheostomy. So I'm gonna have it on my patient and here you're gonna do what's called hyperoxygenation. So I'm gonna turn the oxygen up to 100% just for a few, maybe a minute or so, depending on what your policy requires. And while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and open my kit. There's a little hole there if you wanna open it that way. As with every sterile skill, the tray needs to be nice and clean. You're gonna open your first flap away from you and your second flap towards you. Now sometimes they uh, don't wanna open up, so I'm gonna open this and open this. So remember you have your one inch border. So as I open, you might have to kind of pull and tug. Remember I got that one inch border I can use open this up okay now if you like those gloves in there you can use them I'm not a big fan of them so I'm gonna actually go ahead and use my own gloves if you were to use these ones you can just kind of pinch in and pull them out I know that that's crossing over your one inch border but in order to get these you can do that but like I said I don't really like those kind of gloves they don't fit my hands very well so I'm gonna go ahead and use my own. When I use my own, if you watch that um, video where I put on sterile gloves, you can see kind of all the steps, but I'm gonna make sure that I don't cross over the sterile barrier. I'm going to reach down here, pick up the first glove. I like to take a step back, especially when you guys are doing skills um, in lab because your instructor will know for sure you did not cross the barrier. And I'm gonna open this. Once I get my fingers kind of started, keep that thumb out so you don't contaminate. Now, if you want, you can kind of straighten that guy up. Like I said, I don't like to use this. I'm gonna move it. I don't tend to use this either, but if you want to, that's fine too. Now I'm gonna kind of set up my kit. You can see I am crossing over that one inch barrier, but that's kind of necessary at this point. There's a couple things in here. 
You've got a little wire brush that can clean the inside or the outside of your trach. You've got um, little, I guess, kind of like pipe cleaners. This is that trach dressing that I mentioned that can be used. I don't like to use that. Then I have a dressing here. This is a split dressing to help um, ensure that some of those secretions from the trach don't get into the patient. I'm gonna set that off to the side. You can see I kind of go off to the side. Here's a couple um, gauze to clean. And then here is, um, these are gonna help clean our patient's skin. So I'm just gonna kind of set this stuff off to the side. Okay. <clears throat> Now we're hyperoxygenating hyper our patient. We gotta pick a sterile hand. My sterile hand is going to be the one that um, is closest to my supplies in this situation. So you need to get some um, sodium chloride or whatever your facility has, sterile water, whatever they require. Remember this hand is sterile, this hand is not. I'm gonna walk around because I don't wanna pour over anything. I'm going to pour a little of that there. Remember he's sterile, so actually what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna rearrange a little bit of my kit because I want this here. And then I'm gonna pour a little bit in there for a little rinse. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to say we're gonna pause here for just a second because I actually wanna clean a trach for you guys, but I don't wanna put the one that's gonna go back into the mannequin in with a bunch of water. So I'm just gonna open this. We're gonna pretend this is the one we actually take out of the patient here in just a moment. Okay, so sterile hand, clean hand. Our patient is nice and oxygenated. So if you look down here, I'm gonna go ahead and take the oxygen off the patient. It's really important at this point in time that I am monitoring uh, my patient's oxygen level. I'm gonna go ahead, kind of move everything off to the side as much as I can. This trach, you twist and then pull out. Some you don't. And here, I would take it, bring it around, because remember, things are gross, and I'm gonna drop it in. Okay. So we're going to drop this one in, just as our makeshift. I'm gonna come back over here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the oxygen back on my patient because I don't want them to be without for very long. Okay. So. Now, this is the clean hand, so you always reach in with your um, sterile. So I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna grab, let's do this part first. Um, yeah. Now we're gonna go ahead and start cleaning. When we clean, you push that in there, you just kinda clean it out. Some of them are pretty small, and if it's small, you might have to use one of the pipe cleaners. <clears throat> Don't put this back in your sterile field. And then we're gonna just start kind of cleaning. You can kind of get that wet. So if it's disposable, which this one is a disposable one, but we're using it just for demonstration. Um, this is, if it's disposable, just throw it away. And then, all right, we've got some of that goop out. Don't forget, you might have to even use it to clean the outside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here to let it rinse. Okay. All right, so after you've cleaned your entire tracheostomy, um, you may have to suction inside this little hole right here a little bit just to get some of the secretions out. Then you're gonna take this sterilely and you wanna insert it in just like this. And then this one in particular, you twist it to lock. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna twist it to lock. So do whatever that specific trach needs. And then you're ready to go ahead and do the dressing change. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the patient after we've hyperoxygenated again. And you need to go ahead and clean under the trach. If the person already had a um, dressing, we would remove the dressing at this point. We would take our cotton swabs dipped in some of uh, some new saline and you would kind of clean just like this right around the tubing. So I'm going to kind of lift this up. Don't actually do this, but you can kind of see I'm cleaning it right around that tubing. Okay. So I'm going to hold my trach plate clean, clean, clean. Clean, clean, clean. Keep on cleaning, make sure it looks nice and good. You may have to use um, some of your four by fours. Definitely save one for drying. If your patient has a lot of mucus or secretions, you may even have to use like a suction, like the Yonker suction that you guys can see in the suctioning video to kind of suck some of it. Um, even in this little part right here, there might be some goop that you need to kind of suction out, but make sure you clean everything that you can clean. 
even as much under that um, trach plate as possible because that's where that sits on the skin. All right, when that's complete and dried, here's the trach dressing. You guys can see it's just a split four by four. And I would put it like so on my patient. If your gloves are contaminated, you, you probably want to change them right before you do this. I like to put it where the gauze is sticking up like this because if secretions start to come out of the patient, they're gonna kind of drip down the chest. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and change our trach ties. For this, the patient had, you might have to oxygenate the patient if they're having trouble for a minute. If I'm gonna do these trach ties, I want to only do one side at a time. So, I'll unhook that side. And then this one is the one I like, it's Velcro. Just makes it a lot easier. You're just gonna put the cut side into this little hole and secure it. Then you're going to put both the old trach tie and the new trach tie underneath the patient's neck. If your patient's wiggly a lot of the times, you might want to have a partner. So you're going to pull this. Don't pull it too tight because if you pull it really tight, you might displace that trach as well. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the old trach tie that's gonna end up going in the trash. The way these ones are set up, they're a little bit, um, there's like two parts to it. So now you're gonna take the, the smaller part and loop that. And with this, you may have to cut some of it to make it fit your patient and then wrap it around and secure it with the Velcro. Now your patient You can put the oxygen back on your patient.